Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to the prophetic blast, the edition for the month of February. Why do we have the prophetic blast? The Bible says in Job 38 and verse number 12, reading from NIV, Job 38 and verse number 12, the Bible says, have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? God is asking, he says, have you ever given orders to the morning? Meaning that dawn or morning, if you like, can be given orders. Time can be given orders. Days, weeks, and months can be given orders. And so we come for the prophetic blast in order to order our months, the month ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why we do it at the beginning of the month. Because we want our months to be ordered. The days of the month, the weeks of the month, the time, the hours of the month to be ordered. To be ordered in line with God's agenda, God's will for our lives. He says, have you ever given orders to the morning? In Christ Jesus, we carry the divine nature that empowers us, that enables us, that qualifies us to order our days, to order our weeks, to order our months. For example, I want to say that this month is going to be the best of the best for you in the name of Jesus. You believe that, shout your louder, amen. May this month be for you a season of good news. A season of testimonies. A season of divine connections. I'm talking to you. I said, let it be a season of divine connections. In the name of Jesus Christ. The tallest mountain of your life is being leveled this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Every valley anywhere in your life is being lifted in the name of Jesus. Every crooked place of your endeavors is being straightened this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Every rough place of your endeavors is being smoothened in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe that? Shout your louder. Amen. What are we doing? We are ordering the month. We are ordering the month. We are giving orders to the month so that the month aligns with God's will for our lives. He has said to us concerning this year that it is a year of perfect jubilee from glory to glory. May that be your portion this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And please never neglect or ignore, hear this, the spiritual component of life. Life is highly spiritual. In any case, we came from the spirit realm. Man's origin is spirit. Say that with me. My origin is spirit. Yes, no. I mean, when you look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 3. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 3, the Bible says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. My God. It says we came from the invisible. We came from spirit. <laughs> that is, we came from the spiritual realm. That is where we originated from. That is where we were extracted and derived from. We know, I mean, from John chapter 4, 
is at verse number 24, John 4, and verse number 24, the Bible says, God is spirit. Have you seen it? God is spirit. And he's the one who said in the realm of the spirit, Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26, my God, let us make man in our image. Mm. Let us make man in our image. That is the Godhead having a discussion. And they are not physical. The Godhead is not physical. I'm talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are not physical. They are spirit. God is spirit. And spirit said, let us make man in our image. And the Bible says in verse number 27, it says in verse 27, it says, so God created man in his own image. God created man. Creation happened in the realm of the spirit. At that point, there was no physical component of man. There was only the spirit or spiritual component of man. Man was only made in the next chapter. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7. It's amazing what the Bible is telling us. Now, let's go to verse number 4 of Genesis chapter 2. Let's begin with verse number 4. Now hear this. It says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now hear this. Verse number 5. Now listen. Before any plant of the field was in the earth now and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. My God. Genesis 1, 27. God created male and female. Remember that? He created. And yet, in Genesis 2, 5, we are told that there was no man to till the ground. So where was this man who was created? Because we are told that there was a creation that took place in Genesis 1, 27. Somebody shout hallelujah. That was in the spirit realm. Man existed in the realm of the spirit. But never in the physical until verse number 7 of Genesis chapter 2. When we see now the making of that which was created in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Before you see any physical building, you must know it was first in somebody's mind. It was first in somebody's mind. The architect had to bring on paper what was in somebody's mind. I want a building that looks like this, like looks like this, and then, you know, the architect drew it. And the builder came to put it up. So it existed first in somebody's mind before it existed in the physical. So God made man in the realm of the spirit first, that is what we call creation, and then he brought man in the physical in that Genesis 2 and verse number 7. The Bible says, and the Lord God formed man on the dust. I mean, out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. That is how man who was created in the realm of the spirit found physical expression on the earth. That means the spiritual component of man is the main man. And we can never exist and expect to succeed and prosper in the physical realm without a constant interaction with the spirit realm. With the spirit realm. Somebody lift your right hand and shout, life is highly spiritual. Say that again, life is highly spiritual. 
amazingly and sadly, the non-believers understand this better than the believers. The non-believers, the heathens of this world, understand the spirituality of life. That life is highly spiritual, better than the believer does. It's a problem. Check. Most of the heathens, they never transact without first consulting spirits. Without first consulting spirits. I can give you scriptural examples. I can give you spiritual examples. Let's look at the example of Goliath the Philistine who went out to battle against Israel and Israel that time was laid in that battle by King Saul, the first human king of Israel. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Now, you know that for 40 days, uh, Goliath molested the armies of Israel. He said, I defy you. Give me a man that I can fight with. If I defeat him, you become my servants. If he happens to defeat me, then we are all going to be your servants. And at a point, you know the story that David showed up. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 41, we see David, who had offered to fight against the Philistine, approaching him in order to fight against him. So let's begin from verse number 41 there. It says, meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. Now hear this. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, a little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. Now hear this. Verse number 43. He said to David, now Goliath is speaking to David, please listen. Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And here it is, the Philistines cursed David by his gods. Now, Goliath was one man who conjured spirits. His military prowess was not just a product of physique because, I mean, he was a man of huge stature. It was not on the account of the heaviness and the size of his spear. No. His military prowess was a product of his interactions with gods. The gods of the Philistines. The gods of Ekron. And before he fought anybody physically, he first dealt with the fellow spiritually. But here you are, you go to a place of business without any spiritual power, spiritual authority, without anything spiritual. You just go in physically. You should have known better as a child of God that it is never by might nor by power. It is by the spirit of the Lord. Never go to your workplace, your place of business, your place of study without first interacting with the almighty God in prayers, in worship, in praise, in fellowship. Is it making sense here? Your life, whatever you do, must be backed by spiritual power. And I'm talking about the power of God and not the power of demons. Because there's no power greater than the power of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. But as for Goliath the Philistine, he depended on his gods, the gods of the Philistines. The Bible says he crossed David by his gods. I curse you by the gods of Ekron. That is, I arrest you in the spirit. So when my spear lands on you, you will be finished forever. 
Little did he know that he was dealing with a man who was in constant touch with heaven. Constant touch with heaven. Is it not David who says that seven times a day I praise the Lord? David praised God seven times a day. He was in constant touch with the Lord God of heaven. The man who said, I was young, but now I am old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken. He was a seeker of God. He maintained the spiritual sensitivity. He was in constant touch with heaven. And so the, the curses of the Philistine, Goliath, could not work against David. That is why, my God, look at that verse again. It says, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Look at verse 44. Now, the Philistine continued to say, come here, he said, and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. He continues to curse David by his gods. He's making decrees in the name of the gods of the Philistines. He says, today, I'm going to Offer your flesh to the breast of the air and the world animals. <laughs> My God. Look at verse number 45. Of course, I'm reading from an ivy. Verse number 45. David said to the Philistine, now hear this. Now, so David is also reacting. He says, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come, look at this against you in the name of the Lord Almighty the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied can you see here that it now became the battle of gods you see life is about the battle of gods the battle of gods there is a constant battle of gods the almighty God the almighty God and satanic gods but you know that God must carry the day at the end of the day. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. This was not just a battle between Israel and the Philistines. No, it was a battle of gods. A battle of what? A battle of gods. A battle of gods. Look at the adamancy of Pharaoh in Egypt. You remember the story? How that God appeared to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 15, talking to him about going down to Egypt to rescue the people there. Because he, God said in verses 7 and 8 of Exodus chapter 3, that I have heard the cry of my people. I have seen their affliction and I know their sorrows. And in verse number 8, he said, I have come down to rescue my people. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And he said, I'm sending you down to Egypt. Now hear this. In Exodus chapter 5, reading from verse number 1. Now listen. Now Moses appears before Pharaoh back in Egypt. And they said, he went together with his brother Aaron, they went in and told Pharaoh, they said, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, my God, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Now hear this. I'm showing you that life is not just physical. Life is really about navigating in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The one who amasses higher power from his God is the one who carries the day. Whether that God is demonic or the almighty God. The one who amasses higher power, greater power, at that point is the one who carries the day. Now, listen to the reaction of Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? You stupid boys. Who is the Lord? I have my own gods. You can't be talking to me about the Lord, the Lord. Who is the Lord? 
that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I don't know the Lord. Therefore, I will not let Israel go. I don't know the Lord you are talking about. I know my gods. And so God embarked on a project with Moses and Aaron of dismantling the ten gods of Egypt that were driving Pharaoh's throne and kingship. He said, we will dismantle your gods. We will scatter them in the land of Egypt so that you can know who this God is. They worshipped all kinds of gods. The God of the waters. The God of fertility. All kinds of gods. Ten in number. So every plague was targeted at a particular God that was driving the land and the affairs of Egypt. And when the tenth plague came, you know that Pharaoh and his people were humbled. In Exodus chapter 12, we don't have time at all. Let's read from verse number 33 or 34. Let's look at it. Exodus chapter 12. Verse number, yes. When the firstborn of people and animals died in Egypt, the Bible says the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we shall all be dead that was God the God of heaven the Lord God of Israel showing himself to Pharaoh because the question was who is the Lord and so the issue was you will know him <laughs> you will know him all the enemies of your destiny will know the Lord your God this year in the name of Jesus Christ I'm talking to you. Can I hear a louder shout of amen here? Yeah. Put that verse back there. So, verse number 34 now. Exodus chapter 12, verse number 34. It says, so the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their knitting bones bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Verse 35. Verse number 35. Now, the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing. Verse number 36, now hear this. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians because at that point they became intoxicated. This is how God transferred the worth of Egypt into the hands of the children of Israel. The Bible says that the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested. Thus, they plundered the Egyptians. They plundered, that is, all their work down. Egypt became bankrupt because all their worth was transferred into the hands of the Egyptians. I mean, the children of Israel. The Bible says in Psalm 101, Five and verse number 37, Psalm 105, verse number 37, talking about how God brought Israel out of the land of Egypt. The Bible says he brought them out with what? Silver and gold. Silver and gold. They plundered the economy of Egypt. On the account of what? Spiritual interventions. What are they called? Spiritual interventions, spiritual interventions, spiritual interventions. Have you not read in your Bible? Now, James is teaching on the subject of faith. I think that should be James chapter 2, isn't it? Um, James chapter 2 and verse number 26. Now, I mean, a better part of that, if you read from verse number 14, he's teaching on the subject of faith. But I want us to go straight to the last verse, verse 26. Verse 26, please. James 2, 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. 
This is a massive verse. It is a massive verse and we must have a deep understanding of it. The Bible says that the body without the spirit is what? Dead. The body without the spirit is what? Dead. That one is a big statement, sir. It tells you the component of life. That life has the body part and the spirit part. Your business has the body part and the spirit part. Your career has a, the body part and the spirit part. Your marriage has a body part and the spirit part. And if you're only transacting body-wise, the Bible says you are dead. That business without spirit is dead. That career without spirit is dead. That pursuit without spirit is dead. And there are so many people that are transacting only in body. Only in body. As long as I acquire my master's degree, it is okay. That is why you are suffering like you never went to school. Because life is not only about body. There is also spirit. There's also what? Spirit. There must be body and what? Spirit working together. Working together. And spirit is about transacting with gods. And in this case, for us as children of God, we are talking about interacting with the almighty God. So that we can receive a supply of power, wisdom, graces, anointings, guidance, revelations, insights. Is it making sense here? I'm talking to you. Is it making sense? Life is not only what? Body. Now, in Psalm 20, you know the verse. Verse number 7. Some trust in chariots. Others in horses. That is, some only transact in body. Body realm. Some trust in chariots. Others in horses. That is transacting only in body, in body. So I am a good planner. I'm an excellent time manager. I am very intelligent so I can acquire a master's degree, PhDs. All those things are good to have. But you need to know that just transacting by chariots and horses may not take you to where you're going in this life. Because life has got red seas. You remember the story of Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14? Life has got Red Sea. If you only have a chariot and a horse, how do you cross the Red Sea, my friend? Because there's no bridge at the Red Sea. <laughs> there's no boat, there's no canoe at the Red Sea. How do you cross it? That is where I now you need to graduate from body. You need to graduate from the chariot realm, the horse realm, to enter another realm. It is called the spirit realm. The spirit realm. Is it making sense here? Is it making sense? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You are stranded because you're only trusting in chariots and horses. Chariots are good to have. Horses are good to have, but they may not save you in the day of battle. You need spirits. Now he says there in Psalm 20 verse number 7, he says, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Yes. When chariots cannot take us where we are going, when horses cannot take us there, we will not be stranded. What we're going to do is to remember the Lord our God. We are going to interact with the spirit realm so that we can still arrive at the place we must arrive in life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Never forget James 2.26 for as the body without the spirit is dead. says the body, just having the body without spirit, it says you are dead. You are dead because there is the body part, the physical part, the transactional part, the planning part, the networking part, the strategizing part, the talking to people part. Come on. Hallelujah. 
the part of attending interviews, the part of reading your books, the part of acquiring additional education. Is it making sense? But that is not, not the only part there is. There is also the spirit part. The, the part that says, Shakatari Gadi, Basuta Nagadala. This is an accountant, a chief accountant, a chief executive. Hallelujah. Who is not just depending and relying on strategic plan or business plan. No. Or performance contract. No. He says, Shakata Rigadi. Masuta Rigadi. I appreciate the chariots. I appreciate the body. I appreciate the horses. But there is also a spirit part. There is not only body. There is also what? Spirit. So he goes, Rigagadaligaga. Shakata Ragatala Bakuta Ragada. Listen, as I am praying like this, just around half seven, I'll be seated in my office as director of human resources at the Reserve Bank of Malawi. Shakata Ragadi, Basata Ragade, Yakata Rakata, Yakata Ragada, Yakata Ragada, Yakata Ragada, Rakata Ragada. So I'm setting the stage. You stand in my way, you perish. Is it making sense? You stand in my way, you what? You pet my God will kill you. <laughs> Is it making sense here? Please tell your neighbor, don't be flat. Don't be flat. Don't be flat. Some Christians are too confused. Because you are neglecting and ignoring the spirit component of life. The spirit component of life. The spirit component of life. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And as I do that, don't think I'm neglecting the body part. No. As I sit with them, I'm, I'm also, I am equal in contribution. I am an expert at my job. Is it making sense? They give me a report, I will write a mature report. But that is the body part. Everything begins with the spirit part. It doesn't say that the spirit without the body is dead. No, it's the body without the spirit that will be what? Dead. That means the spirit is more important than the body. Is it making sense? If you don't win in the spirit, you are defeated in the body. Is it making sense here? Good people, can you see that Goliath knew this very well? <laughs> that if I'm going to defeat my enemies, I must not start with body. I must start with what? Spirit. Let me curse them first. Let me conjure some words. Speak some words. He spoke some words over David in the name of his gods. And if David was not a spiritual man, you would have been given that day as meat for the birds and the wild animals. The devil is a liar. Is it making sense here? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You must apply this principle in your marriage. When the marriage is not working, husband is not cooperating, don't do too much talking. Women, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Instead, open that heavenly portal and begin to interact with the Lord God of heaven concerning your marital affairs. Is it making sense here? Hallelujah. You transact in the realm of the spirit with the God of heaven, the custodian of the spirit and the heart of your husband. Shakakakata, Lubakatalaga, Lord God of heaven, touch this man, touch this man. In the name of Jesus, every power of hell that is driving him crazy, that spirit of sexual immorality, that spirit driving him into extramarital affairs, I curse you, I destroy you, I uproot you. In the name of Jesus, every demonic power that is ministering spiritual apathy in the life of my husband that is not interested in church matters I arrest you that is a woman who is transacting with the realm of the spirit because he wants body to align with God's will come on 
Is it making sense here? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Lift your right hand. And say father. Give me understanding. Say that again father. Give me understanding. Say that louder father. Give me understanding. In Jesus name. Amen. So he says in James 2.26. For as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So let's talk about faith. Let's talk about faith. Let's talk about faith. I want to speak briefly on understanding faith. Understanding faith. Tell your neighbor, you need to understand faith. Faith is a spiritual virtue of inestimable value. Inestimable value. Why? Because Jesus' concern about the last days was really about faith. In Luke chapter 8, and verse number 8 but when the son of man comes my God will he really find faith on the earth his concern was whether he was going to find faith at the day of his coming on the earth faith is an instrument of inestimable value in Luke 22, verses 31 to 32, Jesus is talking to Simon Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. <laughs> but he says, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Jesus is concerned about the devil's attack of Peter was not really about Peter's integrity, holiness, and fear of the Lord, but his faith. Because when faith fails, life has failed. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 4, the Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. Look at the second part of that verse. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. That means, my, my God. Now, faith is the believer's lifeline. Faith is the believer's lifeline. Without faith, life has failed. That is why in wanting to sift Peter, the devil wanted to destroy his faith. Because when faith is attacked, destiny is at risk. When faith is attacked, destiny is at risk. And if there is one thing you must guard jealously in your life, it is your faith. Because everything hinges on it. Everything hinges on your faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. But what is this faith? Number one. Now hear this. Faith is working together with God in the light of his will for the attainment of desired outcomes. Working together with God in the light of his will for the attainment attainment of desired outcomes for the attainment of desired outcomes mm. number two what is faith faith is that enduring confidence in the power wisdom and goodness of God what is it enduring confidence Enduring confidence in the power, not in your power, but the power of God. In wisdom, not your wisdom, 
but the wisdom of God. Enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God. That is what faith is. Enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God. This is where you are saying, I know I will make it. And you're not saying that because your uncle promised you money from Australia. So you're saying, I'm going to have Australian dollars. No, but your confidence is in the power of God. You know that God is so powerful that he will help you make it. Is it making sense here? Hallelujah. You remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. 1 Corinthians the second chapter. Verses 4 to 5, Paul saying, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now hear this, verse number 5, that your faith, hear this, should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That is why I'm calling faith that enduring confidence in God's power, God's wisdom, and God's goodness. What is faith? Faith is inner assurance, confirmation and conviction of the reality and tangibility of things hoped for. <laughs> what is faith? Inner assurance, inner confirmation, inner conviction of what? Of the reality and tangibility of things hoped for. Inner assurance confirmation and conviction of the reality and tangibility of things hoped for Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1 Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen sub Stance. That is, that is the material that you stand on. <laughs> is it making sense? Substance. That is a structure that you must stand on at all times. Substance. That is where you must stand. That's your material. The platform where we stand in this life is called what? Faith. 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 That is inner assurance, confirmation and conviction of the reality and tangibility of things out for. Simply put, lastly, now here it is. Faith simply means, now listen, obedient action to what God has said. Obedient action to what God has said. Now, God speaks to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 1. He says, leave your country, your people and your father's house and Go to the land that I will show you. Now here it is. Verse number four. Verse number four. It says, so Abraham departed. That's faith. Abraham departing from his country, from his father's house, from his own people, to a land that God was going to show him is what? Faith. Obedient action. Faith simply means obedient action. And obedient action is a show of what? Faith. Faith. You cannot talk of faith without obedient action. Obedient action. And in this month of February, and all the days of your life, walk in faith. You must walk in what? Walk, never be a doubter. See, doubters can never receive anything from the hand of God. Doubters can never receive anything from the hand of God. Now, hear this. What is in faith? Let's do that quickly before we rise to deal with the issues at hand. And somebody is changing levels. And you happen to be one of them. Can I hear you loud? A shout of amen, Dad. What is in faith? Number one, what is in faith? Number one, it empowers us for understanding. Hebrews 11 verse 3, by faith we understand. Mm, Hebrews 11 3, by faith we understand. So faith empowers 
empowers us for understanding. We cannot understand God. We cannot understand his works. We cannot understand his will and concerning our lives and destiny without faith. Without faith. Lift your right hand. I decree this hour. May you receive faith for understanding right now in the name of Jesus. Receive faith for understanding right now in the name of Jesus. Number two. What is in faith? Faith empowers us, hear this, for excellent and sacrificial giving. You see, non-givers are faith bankrupt. You can't be faithful and not be a giver. <laughs> Is that, do you understand what I'm saying? You can't be full of faith. You can't be faithful and not be a giver. It is faith that empowers us for excellent and sacrificial giving. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 4 and verses 17 to 19. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 and verse 17 to 19. You cannot separate faith and giving. They go together. It takes faith, for example, to comprehend that giving is a gateway to more. When the Bible says, Luke chapter 6 and verse number 38, give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It takes faith for you to believe that you can part with something and you get more at the end of the day. Acts 20 verse number 35, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. It takes faith, for example, to understand, to believe, and to comprehend that 90% of what you have after you have given your tithe will do more than 100%. It takes faith. It takes faith. So those of you who do not tithe, you are weak in your faith. There is no other factor to explain your non-tithing. Your, your, your faith is still at kindergarten level. You can't comprehend the fact that 90% can do more than 100%. That is what God is telling you now. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10. It says, you must bring your tithes to my house. Your whole tithe, actually, to my house. Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10. It says, bring your tithe, your whole tithe, unto my house. And I will open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, hear this, that there will not be enough room for you to receive it. That is, if you give me your 10%, my God. What remains in your hand, which is 90%, will do more than what your 100% without tithe can do. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. So it takes faith to give. It takes faith to tithe and to comprehend that 90% can do more than 100%. Number three, what is in faith? Faith is a gateway to territorial translation. Or transfer from one realm of life to another. It is a gateway to what? Territorial translation. It is a gateway to territorial transfer. That is moving from one realm of distinction to another is a product of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 5 to 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 5 to 6 is talking about Enoch. It says by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Look at verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means Enoch was a man of faith. Was a man of faith. Hallelujah. So by faith, a man can live one level of life to another. Enoch changed territories. It is faith that will shift the believer from one position to another. From one position to another. Can I announce this hour? That by the instrument of faith, I see you changing levels. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak by the faith I carry in Christ Jesus. That somebody listening to me is moving from the low place to the high place. You are one of them. You are moving from the low place to the high place. 
somebody in this month of February is moving from poverty to prosperity. I said from poverty to prosperity, from financial hardship to financial abundance, from financial hardship to financial comfort. Somebody is moving from stagnation to acceleration. I said from stagnation to acceleration. And this is the month. I said this is the month. I said now I want you to jump on your feet wherever you are, online on ground, and you are going to say by the instrument of faith, I prophesy myself into a new realms of success, new realms of testimonies, new realms of breakthroughs, new realms of favor, new realms of distinction. Come on, lift your voice. How many are praying? Prophesy over your month. Prophesy over your month. Prophesy over your days and weeks of this month. Begin to announce by the instrument of faith. I'm moving into new realms, new realms of testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. New realms of breakthroughs, new realms of favor, new realms of distinction, new realms of divine help, divine connections in the name of Jesus. You are one of them. You are praying. You are praying. You are praying. Wherever you are, lift your voice. Lift your voice how many are praying lift your voice uh, pray like a warrior in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus by the instrument of faith uh, I announce uh, my change of position my change of position for the better every satanic cruelty every satanic hostility against my life uh, is dismantled uh, by the instrument of faith uh, in the mighty name of Jesus shakata la gadalamaha ayayayayaha Liga gada la basaya, yakata raga de bobosa, jakata riga de bakuta riga dia mahande, zakata raga de makata raga de, yakata riga de bakata raga de, lubasata liga de makata raga de, yakata riga de basuta liga dia, jakata raga de bakata raga de, yakata riga de bakata raga daya. Shakata ragadi, yakata ragadi, yakata ragadi, yakata ragadi, yakata ragadi, yakata ragadi, masata ragadaya ka, shakata ragadaya, yakata ragadaya, luba sandala gadende, yakata ragadi ta, shakata ragadaya, yakata ragadala bakata ragadi, yakata ragadala bakata ragadi, yakata ragadala bakata ragadi, yakata ragadala. Yakata Ragada, Yakata Ragada, Luba Sata Rigadaya, Shakata Ragade, Yakata Ragade, Yakata Ragade, Yakata Ragade, Masuta Ligade, Yakata Ragade, Yakata Ragade, Yakata Ragade. Oh my God, oh my God. Listen to this. I decree this out. Yes, Lord. And I speak by the faith of God, by the audacity of faith. Yes, Lord. This month of February shall be a new month of favor for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. somebody is receiving unsolicited favor, Amen. unsolicited consideration, Amen. unsolicited consideration. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. somebody listening to me online on ground, your testimony of this month yes. shall make you to say, God, this is too much. This is too much. This is too much. In the name of Jesus. You are not shedding tears of sorrow this month. Every sorrow programmed against you, financial sorrow, marital sorrow, business sorrow, workplace sorrow, programmed against you this month is canceled in the name of Jesus. Sorrow concerning your children is canceled in the name of Jesus. There shall be no sorrow for you this month. The month of February is a sorrow-free month for you. It is a pressure-free month for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now please hear this. In that Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 5. Put it back there. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 5. Glory be to God. <laughs> Says by faith Enoch was taken away. May God take you away from poverty. May God take you away from sickness and disease. May God take you away from shame and embarrassment. May God take you away from stagnation and delays. In the name of Jesus. I 
said in the name of Jesus all you need is to believe somebody shout I believe I believe, I believe. I believe. say that again I believe. I believe ask your neighbor do you believe you know that is the question <laughs> that Jesus asked those two blind men in Matthew chapter 9 verses 27 to 30 isn't it Matthew chapter 9 verses 27 to 30 when Jesus departed from there two blind men followed him crying out and saying son of David have mercy on us <laughs> and when he had come into the house the blind men came to him and Jesus asked them a question do you believe do you believe? It's not just about making noise. It's not just about saying amen, amen, amen to what the pastor is saying. Do you believe? Ask your neighbor, do you believe? You must believe that you shall be all that God has ordained you to be. You must believe that perfect jubilee from glory to glory is your portion this year and all the days of your life. Uh, somebody lift your right hand and shout, I believe, 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 I believe that I am going very far. I believe. Now begin to tell God what you believe about your life. Uh, begin to tell God what you believe about your children. To begin to tell God about what you believe concerning your career what do you believe don't just say I believe what do you believe this man yes believed that Jesus was able to heal their eyes to give them sight to deliver them from blindness what do you believe my brother what do you believe my sister wherever you are online on ground there are so many of you watching on YouTube there are so many of you watching on Facebook yes there are so many of you listening on Mixler wherever you are online what do you believe right in the comfort of your home tell God what you believe what do you believe what do you believe concerning your sons concerning your daughters concerning your prospects concerning your possibilities in life what do you believe I believe is not enough tell God what you believe in the name of Jesus I am the head and not the tail. I believe. I am above only. I believe. I believe my children are going very far. I believe my children are candidates of distinction, success, greatness, and prosperity. I believe it. I believe. Long life is my passion. Divine health is my portion. I believe uh, that the month of February is a month of good news, uh, a month of abundance, uh, a month of prosperity. Mountains are leveled, uh, valleys are lifted, uh, crooked places are made straight. Uh, it is a month of favor, uncommon favor, and solicited consideration. In the name of Jesus, uh, I believe uh, that in the month of February, my God has already already gone ahead of me to make the crooked places straight, to cut in sunder all the bars of iron, to break in pieces all the gates of brass. In the name of Jesus, I believe that in the month of February, the Lord my God has a reason to scatter all my enemies. Those that were incensed against me shall be as nothing this month. In the name of Jesus, I believe the Lord my God has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I believe that in the month of February and in this entire year, the lines are falling unto me. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places, in pleasant places, in pleasant places, in pleasant places. places. Yay! I have a goodly heritage. I have a goodly heritage. I have a goodly heritage. I believe, I believe, I believe that I am walking in greater power, in greater authority, in greater signs, in greater wonders. This is my time. I believe it is my season, my season, my season, my season, my season, my season. How many are praying? 
Bragada, Shakata Bragade, Yakata 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 Bragade, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe the Lord is on my side, the Lord is fighting all my battles, the Lord is scattering all my enemies. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Therefore, I can never be shaken. I can never be confused. I can never be worried. I can never be anxious. I can never be wearied. In the name of Jesus. Ligata Lagadende. Shakata Ligagata. Yata Katala Gade. Ayayayaya. Luba Satala Gadia. My God. Shakata Ragada Labasa. Luba Satala somebody should be saying I believe I'm settling my retail I'm settling my retail I'm settling my retail somebody should be saying I believe I'm entering into marriage this year I'm entering into marriage this year I'm entering into marriage this year somebody must be saying I believe there's a scholarship for me a postgraduate scholarship for me Somebody should be saying, I believe I'm completing my project within this first half of the year. In the name of Jesus. I believe I have entered a new realm of science. One thousand miracles. I have entered a new realm of power, a new realm of distinction, a new realm of prosperity, a new realm of abundance, a new realm of promotion, spiritual promotion, ministry promotion, financial promotion, promotion in life, promotion in destiny. In the name of Jesus, I believe I will never be put to shame concerning my children. Concerning my children, concerning my children, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. I believe I will never be put to shame concerning my walk with God, concerning my service in the kingdom of God, because my God is not an exploiter, He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him in the name of Jesus. Shakanda Ligata Lamaha, hey, Shakata Ragadaya. Yakata ragadiri besete regede, yakata ragadala mahande, yakata ragadinda makuta ragadaya, yakata ragade, yakata la basaya. I believe that by what Jesus did for me on the cross, I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and never beneath. I can never be stranded. I can never be stranded. I can never be confused. The Lord is on my side. Likata la basaya. The Lord is with me. The Lord is in me. Shakata li gadili besaya. Jesus, mighty name. Now, please, I want you to make a prayer of exemption. What kind of prayer? Exemption. The prayer of exemption. The Bible speaking in Psalm 91 and verse number 7. Psalm 91 and verse number 7 it says a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. Oh, it shall not come near you. Somebody shout it shall not come near me. Said like a believer, it shall not come near me. It shall not come near me. There are certain things that must not come near you. Hallelujah. Poverty must not come near you. Yes. Divorce must not come near you. Yes. Delay must not come near you. Yes. Shakata Ragade. Look at verse number 10. Psalm 91 and verse number 10. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Tell your neighbor we are going somewhere. No evil shall befall you. 
tell your neighbor, that is me, that is me, that is me, that is me. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Your dwelling is only for you, not for plagues. Is it making sense here? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. This is what we call exemption. Somebody shout exemption. Exemption. Now hear me. Hebrews 11, 5. You remember that is where we are. <laughs> By faith, Enoch was taken away. He was taken away by what? By faith. So faith takes people. What does faith do? It faith is a carrier, so it's a vehicle. <laughs> that takes people away. Away from danger. Away from stagnation. Away from confusion. Mm. Now hear this. By the same faith, Enoch was not found. Exemption. By faith, Enoch was not what? Found. I decree this hour, you shall not be found among the sick. You shall not be found among marital strugglers. You shall not be found among the stagnated. You shall not be found among the rejected. You shall not be found among the depressed. You shall not be found among the dejected. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to announce, use your mouth to announce what you are hearing. You are going to say, beginning this month of February, I shall not be counted among the sick. I shall not, now, mention anything you don't want in your life and announce I shall not be counted among those that are suffering that condition. Come on everyone, online on ground. By faith, by faith, I must not be found among financial strugglers. No, that is not where I shall be found. They shall look for me among financial strugglers. They shall not find me there because faith has taken me away. Because faith has taken me away. Because faith has taken me away. Taken me away. I shall not be counted among marital strugglers, among ministry strugglers, among financial strugglers, among career strugglers. I shall not be found among them. 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 I shall not be found. Pray a prayer of exemption. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Pray like a believer. Pray like you mean it. Pray like someone who knows that your prayer is working. That God is hearing. You shall also declare a thing and it shall be established. And light is going to shine upon all your ways. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Your voice. This year, somebody must be announcing that this year, this year, I shall not be found among singles because I'm entering into marriage. I'm entering into marriage. The Lord, somebody should be announcing that the Lord is taking away from singleness, singlehood, into marriage, into marriage, into marriage. Somebody should be saying, the Lord is taking me away from unemployment to employment. I shall not be found among the employed employed. I shall not be found among the unemployed. In the name of Jesus, how men are praying, how men are praying, make that announcement. Make that announcement. Make that announcement. Make that announcement. It is your time. It is your time. Shakata ragadala baba baba basa. Lakata ragadaya. I shall not be found among ministry strugglers, marital strugglers, financial strugglers, strugglers with sickness and disease. I shall not be found among the sick. I shall not be found because faith has taken me away. I am taken away into prosperity I am taken away into success I am taken away into greatness I am taken away into distinction I shall not be found among the mediocres I shall not be found among the average I shall not be found among dwarfs I shall not be found among little ones in the name of Jesus because the little one that was I has become 
become a thousand has become a thousand I am a thousand I am a thousand I am a thousand I am a strong nation 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 in the name of Jesus In Jesus precious name we have prayed hallelujah Amen. <laughs> the Bible says in Matthew 28 This is one to seven now after the Sabbath. As the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. These are spiritual matters. The earthquake had spiritual origins and yet had physical consequences. There was an earthquake. Why? Because the angel had landed. Your enemies shall hear earthquakes. Amen. The Bible says, and there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Every stone that the devil used to shut your doors in life, that stone is rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ. That stone is rolled away in the name of Jesus. Now hear this. Mm. Remember that it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who came to see the tomb where Jesus had been buried. Never forget that. Verse number five. But the angel answered and said to the two Marys, to the two women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. You seek who? Jesus. Jesus. Where at the tomb? You know what these women were told? Verse number six, he is not here. That is, if they visit the prison house of ministry strugglers, they go to room one to say, is, we are looking for Esau Banda. They, 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 in room one, they will be told he is not here. Room two, 
He's not here. Room three, room four, and there are ten rooms. They go up to room ten. He's not here. So where is he? He's risen. <laughs> the man has changed level. He's not struggling with ministry anymore. He's not here. He's not here. He's not here. I am not poor. I am rich. I'm not sick. I am healthy. I'm not stagnated. I'm making progress. Begin to make those confessions. Begin to make those confessions. He is not here. His levels have changed. <laughs> yes, Lord. Banda is not here. His levels have changed. His levels have changed. He's not here. 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 They were told, they weren't looking for Jesus in the tomb. They were told, he is not here. The man has a reason. The man has a reason. His level has changed. His level has changed. He has experienced a divine relocation, divine transfer. He has moved from death unto life. <laughs> Lift your voice, prophesy over yourself, announce over yourself. Shakata ragadia bahata, yakata ragade, zakata ragadaya, yakata ragade. No, I cannot be found among the strugglers. I cannot be found among the sick. I cannot be found among the stagnated. Levels have changed. 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 In the name of Jesus. And affliction shall not rise up a second time. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shakata ragadala bababababasa. Yakata ragadala basuta rigade. Shakata ragadala bakuta ragada. Likakara basende rigadi bakata ragada. Yakata ragadala bakaya. Lipa salagade bakata ragadi. Yes, Lord, Kabara Baraba, in Jesus mighty name lift your hands you are blessed Amen. success is coming to you Amen. prosperity is coming to you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. in this year of perfect jubilee from glory to glory Break forth financially. Amen. Break forth maritally. Amen. Break forth in your businesses. Amen. Break forth in ministry. Amen. Break forth in your health. Amen. Break forth spiritually. Amen. Break forth on every side. Amen. All your mountains are leveled. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are free from slavery. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. this year you will never see shame. Amen. I said shame will never come near you. An end has come to all your struggles. An end has come to all your struggles. An end has come to all your stagnation. An end has come to all your frustrations. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever was impossible for you in the past shall now be possible. It shall be possible this year. What you could not reach in the past, you are going to reach this time around. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. I decree this hour, you shall not smell affliction again. You shall not smell affliction again. Every power of darkness rising against you in life is destroyed in the name of Jesus. You will make it in life. You are the head and not the tail. 
you are above only and never beneath in the mighty name of Jesus doors of favor are open unto you doors of success are open unto you doors of prosperity are open unto you doors of victory are open unto you your star will shine brighter and brighter brighter and brighter brighter and brighter in the mighty name of Jesus a little one among us has become a thousand a small one among us has become a strong nation in the mighty name of Jesus any power that was pulling you backwards when you want to go forward that power is broken right now that power is broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus no wicked arm shall be able to reach you in the mighty name of Jesus my God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies and your enemies will not stop you your enemies will not stop you in the mighty name of Jesus I said in the name of Jesus every garment of shame around your life is taken away the meaning is no more shame in your life no more confusion in your life no more financial hardship in your life in the mighty name of Jesus this month of February and all the days of your life you are going forward I said you are going forward I said you are going forward you are rising higher you are changing levels you will enjoy new testimonies nothing shall stop you I said nothing shall stop you your joy will be full in the mighty name of Jesus your testimonies will be endless your hands will do great things you are enjoying open doors ministerial open doors business open doors open doors of favor open doors of promotions career open doors financial open doors you believe that shout a man three times I decree right now you are crossing limits you are breaking barriers you are breaking new records you are breaking new records you are scaling new heights you are changing levels you will be highly favored you shall be much celebrated all your prayers will be answered all your enemies will be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus this year the barren are becoming fruitful the poor are becoming rich the sickly are becoming healthy the forgotten shall be remembered captains shall become cap captives shall become captains in the name of Jesus slaves are becoming masters Dwarfs are becoming giants. Somebody shout, I am one of them. May God bless you. May his blessing make you rich. May he make your name greater. May God bless those who bless you. And curse those who curse you. May you become a blessing this year. Somebody shout three times, I am a blessing. You believe it, give the Lord a shout of praise. A shout of praise. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Worship Him, celebrate Him, magnify Him. Come on, everyone, lift your voice. I appreciate the King of Kings. Celebrate Him, everyone, for the impartations of grace, anointings, and favor for the new season. Lift your voice. Huh? Give Him thanks, give Him praise. Celebrate Him, everybody. Celebrate him, exalt him, glorify him, appreciate him. It is a great season. It's a mighty season. A mighty season. A mighty season for the saints. A mighty season for the church. A mighty season for the children of God. A mighty season for our families. A mighty season for our children, our sons and our daughters. Celebrate him, everybody. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Yes, Lord. 
We bless you, Father. We give you glory. We give you thanks. And we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.